Hi guys, Mark here. Welcome again today to Pool Moto here in the south of England and today we're going to be reviewing the all new Royal Enfield Hunter 350. Well, hi guys, Mark here. I'm really excited today to be bringing you a review on the all new Royal Enfield Hunter 350. So we'll just walk around it, run through all the specifications first, then we'll go for a test ride, and then we'll finish off with a walk around um, down at Pool Harbour at the end. So many thanks to Pool Moto for lending me all the lovely bikes throughout this year. I would normally be saying to you that they've lent me this bike but I'm pleased to tell you that I've actually bought this bike myself. Uh, this is my bike now and uh, I'll be bringing you lots more reviews on it uh, in due course over the next few months. So we just run through the price first. So for the dapper colours which are white, grey and ash it's £3,899 which I think is just incredible value for this bike. For the rebel colours which are blue, red and black the price jumps by £80 to £3,979 so I'm sure you'll agree incredibly good value. This uses the same engine as in the Meteor and the Classic it's a superb engine, lots of torque, uh, it's got so much character, it's very, very smooth, it's an absolute joy to ride. 349cc single cylinder air and oil cooled, it says in the uh, Royal Enfield specs. Even though it hasn't got an oil cooler, the oil still does a bit of a job to uh, cool the engine. Air cooled, two valve engine, it's got simple screw and lock nut adjusters for the tappets up there, so quite simple servicing produces a modest 20 horsepower at 6,100 rpm but I say it's not about the power on this it's just about cruising down country lanes 55 60 mile an hour just enjoying the ride torque is 27 newton meters at 4,000 rpm so the weight on this is a bit less than the classic 181 kilograms wet weight and the wheelbase is 1,370 millimetres. The classic weighs in at 195 kilograms and it's got a slightly longer wheelbase of 1,390 millimetres. Seat height on this, really nice and low, so you can get your feet down easily. 790 millimetres, 805 millimetres for the classic. Let me just put a quick cutscene in for you. Um, you can see me on the bike. I'm not that tall, I'm five foot seven, about 170 centimetres. I've got a 30 inch inside leg. And you can see that I can very, very easily get my, my legs, uh, feet flat to the floor with my knees slightly bent. So just have a look at me on the bike, then you can compare that for yourself. Fuel tank size on this is 13 litres, not a massive tank, but these bikes are unbelievably economical. I've read many, many reviews of owners getting well over 100 miles per gallon. Uh, Royal Enfield are quoting 2.65 litres per 100 kilometres, which does work out at well over 100 to the gallon. So you'll get a range of around about 250 miles from this. So it's very, very cheap motoring.
So tyres are, we've got a 110 on the front, 140 on the rear, 17 inch wheels. These are by Seat, which is an Indian make of tyre. They're very, very popular tyres in India. They're a decent tyre and they give good grip, so um, no worries there at all. And um, a lot of owners will be uh, pleased to know these are tubeless tyres, so uh, that's good. So just working around the bike. Got a five speed gearbox on this. It's very positive, very smooth shifting. I've had no problems at all, no false neutrals or anything like that. So a uh, really nice gearbox. So Royal Enfield are kind of marketing this bike as it's a bike for the urban environment. So it's definitely got a, a more of a sort of a, a street sort of look about it compared to the uh, the Meteor and the Classic. I think personally, Royal Enfield have totally, you know, gone to town on this. They've really done an amazing job. I think this is going to appeal to a, a wide range of riders. Um, it's going to, I think this is going to be Royal Enfield's top selling bike in my opinion. So got telescopic forks up front, 41 millimetres with uh, nice gaiters to protect them, 130 mil of travel, non-adjustable, but it doesn't matter because they're perfectly perfectly set up. And on the rear, twin shocks with preload adjuster down there. Got a twin piston front caliper by Bybury, which is a Brembo make. So good, good strong braking on this, very smooth. ABS is standard on all bikes these days. 300mm disc on the front and a 270mm disc on the rear. Really nice clocks there. Looking very much the same as the other two bikes. Showing you lots of information. I have GPS checked the speedo uh, when it says 30 is actually doing 28 which is very acceptable and when it's showing 60 miles an hour it's actually doing 57 so uh, all good in that respect so on the hunter compared to the other two the uh the steering angle the rake is a bit sharper so that gives you a little bit bit more quicker steering it's definitely noticeable when you uh, ride the bike you can feel that it's lighter as well and they've also given the throttle a little bit of a sharper feel on the fuel injection so the whole bike just feels a little bit more fun shall we say not that the classic and the meteor aren't good they are absolutely brilliant this just feels a little bit lighter a little bit sort of perkier a little bit more fun i wish i would say it's also got a shorter wheelbase so again more sort of dynamic handling and all the sort of uh, geometry is a bit tighter on it as well. I think the foot pegs are slightly higher as well. We've got standard bulbs, halogen bulbs in the front here, no LEDs there. And we've got LEDs in the rear light here. There's a convenient little USB just there if you want to power your phone or your sat nav. So behind here, I'll take this off for you in a minute, behind here is all your electrics and relays and just here is a little cable release to take the seat off. I'll put that in for you in a minute. So I've just removed the side panel for you. You've got the battery and all the relays there and you've got a little tiny wire thing here which you pull. That releases the rear seat. Now under the rear seat, unfortunately there's no storage you've just got your, your tool kit. The Royal Enfield are quoting a top speed of this of 71 miles an hour, 114 kilometers an hour. As I said, it's, it's not a bike for speed, it's just about cruising. Very cheap and easy servicing on these. They're not expensive bikes to run. So Royal Enfield are quoting in the book, the first service is at 300 miles. They check the valves as well. You've then got an inspection service at 3,000 miles and it's saying an oil and filter change at 6,000 miles. Now personally myself, um, I'm going to be changing the oil a bit sooner on this, about 3,000 miles. So first service at 3, 300 miles, sorry, and inspection service at 3,000 and oil change is quoted at 6,000. 
the valves are meant to be checked and adjusted at 6,000 miles as well. And the recommended oil on these is 1550W semi-synthetic. But just looking around the bike, guys, you know, the um, again, you know, Royal Enfield have really done a good one on this. It's beautiful build quality. I can't see straight away anything nasty, no nasty welds or anything. Quite a lot of plastics on the bike to obviously keep the weight down. Um, they've put a fender extender there to keep all the rubbish off the engine. So yeah, they've done a really good job. Right then guys, let's go for a test ride. Okay then, Hunter 350. Let's try this out. So very easy to swing a leg over because the seat is nice and low. So if you're looking for your first sort of big-ish bike, this would be absolutely fantastic. It doesn't feel at all heavy, about 180 kilos uh, wet weight. Um, we'll just run through all the controls. So we've got a cable clutch which is not adjustable for span, that's your adjustment for the uh, free play there. Uh, your, your info button just there, which changes it from uh, the trip meters to the odometer. You've got your high and low beam and headlight flasher, indicators and your horn, all very simple. No rider modes, no fancy electronics on this, but that's just what, what you want really. And over here, you've got your engine uh, start and stop and your hazards and a non-adjustable front brake lever. So really, really simple, down to basic sort of biking, but that's absolutely perfect so really nice little dash there analog uh, speedometer you've got your fuel gauge a clock all your trips and you've got a gear position indicator which is really handy as well and your warning lights down the bottom there so to start up you just push this to one side here and oh what a lovely sound and I've just mentioned about the sound this this bike the hunter sounds quite a bit more meaty and throaty than the classic of the meteor and especially when you open it up there's definitely a bit more of a roar to it which is just pure uh, pure heaven it really does sound good okay let's do this so easily into first gear away we go it's a very smooth clutch it's quite light that's nice engine just thumps away it sounds great So we're here in Dorset in the south of England, just if you're wondering. So it may only have 20 horsepower this engine, but it's got a lovely spread of torque. It's a very linear power, it's not going to catch you out or anything like that. And it's such a smooth engine, it's fabulous, it really is. You can definitely hear that extra little bit of noise from that exhaust don't worry it's not going to annoy the neighbors at all but when you open it up it really does sound throaty and then let's just run through the bike in the usual way so starting off with the mirrors a little bit a little bit of vibration in them i can see about 30 percent of my elbows but all in all you still get a bit of a view behind so no problems there i can still see fine behind i may get some uh, bar end mirrors uh, for this they just look a bit better in my opinion but yeah mirrors are okay handling is really really dynamic and fun on this it's great so looking at the uh, analog dash there and the lcd display in the middle very very clear currently just pottering along at 55 miles an hour in fifth gear engine feels very relaxed at this speed you know it, it's not revving higher in the slightest i can see my gears fuel time all that sort of stuff so all good stuff in that respect so a uh, nice clear display there i like that riding position is very upright typical sort of naked bike foot pegs feel a little bit higher than the classic but all in all a very comfortable position nice bars slightly raked back yeah if you were taller than me say you were six foot plus you'd have no problem at all riding this the seat is very comfortable it's very wide feels very plush so far I've been on this for I rode it for a couple of hours yesterday and no, no problems at all with numbum so it's a really nice comfortable seat you can have no problems with this riding this all day if you wanted to
general vibrations from the engine there isn't really any it's just got a lovely lovely sort of thump a really characterful sort of thud to it shall we say so i've got no no vibrations really coming from anywhere at all it's just a, a joy to ride all the switch gears nice and simple all very easy to use so we're doing 60 miles an hour sorry we're doing 50 at the moment i'll just open it up a bit so there's your 55 and there's your 60. we'll take it on a dual carriageway in a bit just to see how it holds its speed there but this this will sit at 60 miles an hour even 65 all day long with not too much trouble super economical really great right we're just going to come on to a dual carriageway just to see how the uh, hunter 350 fares at slightly higher speeds so just third gear now just gently opening it up not over revving it clutch and gearbox are super smooth very positive so at 50 mile an hour now it's holding that at 55 with no problem at all the engine feels very very relaxed no vibrations at all coming through the bike just opening it up slightly so there's your 60 miles an hour again very smooth I can feel a little bit of a buzz coming through my feet but that's it so very impressive so 60 miles an hour on this is about 57 true miles an hour if I open it up a bit more yeah it's pulling still strongly up to about 70 miles an hour so um this bike will quite comfortably sit at 60 mile an hour all day with no trouble whatsoever I'm just going to back it off a bit to 55 just going to have a cruise really so there's your 55 open it up again a little bit there's your 60 and you can definitely feel there's about another 10 mile an hour left in it so um the hunter 350 is more than capable of holding its own on dual carriageways even on motorways it would be fine i would have thought but it, it's home really is more like your country roads and your a roads just to have a gentle ride on really you could even do touring on this you could tour on any motorbike you could put some luggage on the back and uh, it's got a good range, it's very comfortable and it will just sort of sit at this sort of speed all day long okay guys, so the uh, Hunter 350 will hold its own on a dual carriageway if you needed it to catch you in a bit so we're just in third gear now, I'm just going to open it up a little bit for you guys opening up a little bit cool doesn't it make a good noise there's your 40 there's your 50 and it just keeps on going till about 70 miles an hour so absolutely plen plenty powerful enough for this type of riding so the suspension it's all very basic stuff but you know what it gives a really nice quality of ride just the same as the classic and the Meteor but the whole bike just does feel that little bit lighter you can feel that you can feel it's got a shorter wheelbase it just feels a little bit more sporty a bit more engaging than the other two it's the best way i can describe it the throttle response is very soft very mellow it's not going to catch you out in the slightest okay so there's nothing behind we'll just try the brakes out front and rear together here we go now ABS kicked in then so yeah absolutely fine um, no problems at all with the braking performance more than adequate for this sort of bike so first gear second just that noise feels sounds great so into top gear now just cruising at about 50 hasn't got a rev counter but I'd say the engine's doing about I don't know three and a half thousand revs you can you can barely hear it hear it to be honest it's very smooth I absolutely
absolutely love the riding position. It's nice and upright. Got a nice steady wind blast hitting me in the chest, no problems at all. The seat is really, really nice on it as well. It's got quite a decent passenger seat as well with hand uh, grab rails, so um, it's fine to take a passenger. So just got a couple of twisties up here, just see what it's like. Obviously slightly damp, cold roads today, but yeah, it feels very, very nimble, very agile. It feels very light. It's a, it's a really fun motorbike, but if you just want to just cruise around the countryside, it will do that very well as well. And the best bit is, you know, you've got that 100 miles per gallon economy, so it's going to be cheap as chips to run. nasty bump just up here pull up there it is no problems just gonna drop it down to fourth so there we are 50 mile an hour it's actually accelerating up this hill into fifth yeah no problem at all still very very smooth great stuff guys well, hi guys and welcome to a night riding section on the all new Royal Enfield Hunter 350 so that's it on low beam with the indicators on I'll just show you the uh, the rear lights so it's a rear LED on this and standard bulbs in the uh, indicators and the uh, headlights got halogen bulbs to standard bulb so that's it on the low just flick it onto the high low and that's the high. So I don't know if you're going to pick that up. <laughs> that's the high beam. It's pretty decent actually for non LEDs. So anyway, let's try this out. It's a very, very cold night tonight, so I'm not going to be out long. <laughs> right then, here we go. So that's low beam. And we're going to flick it onto high beam. Oh wow, well, that's actually much better than I was expecting. That's nearly as good as LEDs, to be honest. So there's your low and your high. Oh, that's um, made me quite happy. There's a lot of these um, sort of uh, standard sort of bulb lights can be a bit dim, to be honest, and a bit a bit rubbish. But that is not too bad at all. So that's your low beam which is very easy to see, nice and wide beam and that's your high beam right we're just gonna go down the road now which has got street lights because it's a bit foggy out in the countryside so it still give you a good idea so the low beam is really working nicely it's right out to the side there so that's great. High beam is reaching out. Oh, a good, good 50 meters ahead of me there. I don't know if the, I don't expect the GoPro is going to be picking that up very well. But um, all in all, guys, the lights on the uh, Enfield Hunter 350 are pretty decent for what they are. If you had to do um, an extended sort of night ride, no problem at all. Even low beams, pretty good. It's reaching out about sort of 20 meters in front. Yeah, low and high, and then we've also got the flasher, which works well. Right, let's talk about the um, the dash. So analog dash on this, and um, it's really, really bright. I can very easily see uh, the speedo there. I'm in third gear. All very easy to see, nice and bright. So that's really good. So we'll just try that high beam again. Yep, really nice high beam. And the low beam is absolutely perfect. So it's good news guys, the um, Enfield Hunter 350's lights are pretty good. High beam is exceptionally good actually for a standard halogen bulb. 
so that's great guys if you had to do some night riding no problem at all on the hunter 350 Right, we're just in a, a town environment now. Just going to try out the Hunter in its urban environment. So we're just in third gear at the moment. Just checking for any uh, nasty irregularities in the fueling, any surging, any hunting, that sort of thing. So far, absolutely perfect. The fueling is impeccable, super smooth. There's no hunting, surging or any nastiness like that. Throttle response is very soft and gentle, so uh, that's great. Down to second. Again, all very, very smooth and easy. Bike feels very light. It's nice and upright, good visibility. Just into third gear now low speed see how it pulls third out of that corner again no juddering or sort of shuddering from the drivetrain just down to second again immaculately fueled very light very easy clutching gearbox into third pulls very keenly if you open it right up Second gear, just over 10 miles an hour now. Engine's just purring lovely beneath me. Easy to use indicators. So fourth gear now, 30 mile an hour. Sort of prefers third really at 30 mile an hour. All the brakes work nicely, very smooth. The brakes feel very smooth operation. So that's good news guys, the, uh, the Hunter is perfect for city work, you might be using it for commuting because it's such an economical bike, this would be a superb commuter in my opinion. So 5 stars for me for the Hunter 350 in the urban environment. We're just down at Pool Harbour now, we're going to find a nice little spot and do a final thoughts walk around. Well, I hope you enjoyed that review, guys, on the Hunter 350. An absolutely superb machine. Great value, good fun. Just a really, really nice, nice bike to ride. Let's go into that far corner. That's going to be perfect. Okay, right, we'll just see what it's like into first and neutral. So first gear, easy, neutral, nice and easy. Just let you hear that glorious sound. All right. We'll look at that dash for you. And there we go. Okay, let's have a final walk around shall we so all in all guys I know I'm rather biased but um, that is a superb bike um, it's light it's fun um, it's got a superb engine tons of character it sounds great um, the seats really comfortable it's got great fuel economy um, the suspension even though it's basic gives a really nice quality of ride these are uh, see it tires feel good uh, the brakes are strong um, just looking around, the build quality, all the welds look absolutely fine, the frame's nice, um, the paintwork on the tank's nice, It's all, all this is lacquered. It's quite nice, I hadn't actually noticed, but there's, um, you sort of got this like little contour line here and there, it's really good. Right, let's just see what it's like to push around. So you've got a very convenient grab rail here for your passenger or to move it about look. So it's super light off the side stand, just feels like a big 125 really. 
and yeah really really easy to push about so that's fine we'll just try it onto the center stand it's another great feature it has a center stand for maintenance so very easy to put onto the center stand but you know all the plastics are nice nicely painted uh, that's your air filter air box behind there gearbox is smooth really is guys it, it's a great bike I think they're gonna sell thousands of these in the UK well they have already this probably sold a million in a, in India I'm guessing but um, it really is a cracking bike I'm chuffed to bits with it um, I'm really pleased I've got one and as I said please um, give me a like don't forget to uh, share and subscribe to my channel post your comments down below please and um, just post what you think about the Hunter 350 So there you go guys, hope you enjoyed that, ride safe as always, and uh, I'll bring you another review in a week or so. Take care, all the best, and bye for now.